Hey everybody, it is May the 3rd, 2017, and this is our first Q&A. Um, I asked on my blog page, The Life of Rebecca, and I also asked on my personal Facebook page, does anybody have any questions about Ella Stanlis, or what we call EDS for short? Um, I'm glad to say I had three ladies pipe up and ask me a few questions, and I'm going to answer those for you quickly today. Um, big shout out to the three who, who, you know, popped up first, which was Kathy, Lou, and Angela. Thank you so much, ladies. And, um, let's just dive right into it. Pull them up here real fast. Okay, it looks like Kathy and Lou asked, um, asked, uh, actually one of the same questions. Finish. Opening, come up, there we go. I should have grabbed my glasses before I did this. Now it's like, ooh, small computer screen. Um, the first question that was asked was, what is EDS? EDS in my world stands for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, as you can tell by my shirt and the pretty little zebra. I'll explain the zebra in a minute. And it is a connective tissue disorder. It is genetic. You are born with it. There are different variants. Um, there are three different types that are the big ones, although there are more like, I think, 12 or 13. Um, but the big three that people hear about are um, vascular EDS, classical EDS, and then hypermobility EDS, with hypermobility being one of the most prevalent types. Um, basically put, our collagen is malformed all the way down to the genetic level. And there's collagen in about 95-96% of your body. It's in places that you actually wouldn't think there would be collagen, like organs, um, muscle, um, skin is definitely one um, that you hear about a lot. But um, it, it is it's kind of crazy. And it's one of those things, it's not a rare disease, it's just rarely diagnosed. Um, I know several people who have gone many, many, many years without a diagnosis until now. And then it's kind of like with me, when I finally got my diagnosis, it was like a lot of the stuff that I'm going through makes perfect sense. Um, I know my journey to be diagnosed was actually I was diagnosed with something called POTS, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome, first. Um, and it was about a month uh, I want to say about a year and a half, maybe, maybe a couple extra months in there before I got my elder stainless diagnosis. And um, how that came about really was like, I've always been very flexible growing up and I could, you know, bend ways that you're not supposed to be able to bend. And a couple other things that was like, eh, but I was always told that was normal. Mom would always say, hey, that's fine. That's normal. You're fine. You know, everybody feels that. That was the big line. Everybody goes through this. You're fine. Um, it was a few weeks after my mom's funeral, I was having some issues with my pots and I passed out and was on the floor and, um, I already had one hip dislocated. I had dislocated one hip, um, actually both of my hips and different times, but never at the same time. And this happened and I was on the floor and both of my hips were out. So that landed me in my first nursing home appointment and landed me with an orthopedist, um, because I had dislocated things before. I dislocated fingers, shoulders, um, knees, stuff like that. And um, again, oh, you're fine. You were probably just doing something too strenuously, like biking or hiking or whatever, you know. Nothing was ever really given any consideration. So when I um, went to the orthopedist and I had two dislocated hips, and I had done physical therapy to strengthen everything, and yet I'm still popping things out of joint or they're sliding out of place and you know, they're almost out of joint, but then, you know, I'm able to get them right back in, so they don't, but it still hurts. It's still damaging. Um, the doctor looked at me, and he's like, well, if you already have POTS, I think you might know what the next issue is. And I was like, well, I've read about EDS from the POTS support groups I was in, and I've heard about it, but who wants to go to their doctor and be like, hey, I think I have another rare disease. Um, it was bad enough getting the POTS diagnosis. And, and stuff like that. So he, um, the doctor I was seeing, he's like, well, I'm going to do this. He says, I can't touch you. Um, and I know surgeons won't touch you either because no matter what they do, they try to fix you. It's just going to break again. But we need to know why. So he sent me to a genetic doctor in um, Columbus. And um, yeah, I walked out of there with a diagnosis. Um, it is 
it's crazy because it's like when I got my diagnosis, I was like, oh my gosh, everything made so perfect sense. So, um, in a way, it was a good way. It was a good thing. I know several people who are misdiagnosed. The doctor was actually able to look back at my mom's history and with me and um, kind of like, you know, okay, your grandmother did this, your mom did this, and, and, I, and he was able to diagnose mom actually, you know, posthumously. And I'm, in a way, I sit here and I go, I was like, you know, maybe if they had done things differently with mom, maybe she'd still be here. But I know what kind of faith my mom had in God. So I can't really wish that she'd still be here. That's just taking her away from heaven. It's just the way I, I prefer to look at it. So, um, Ella Stanlos is represented. We have a mascot, and it is the zebra. The reason it's the zebra is um, when you go to the doctor, and when doctors are in med school, a very common line that they're told to remember when they're making diagnoses is by is, well, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Or just think horses, don't think anything else, really. Well, zebras make hoofbeats, too. And just because it is not the common thing like a horse would be, doesn't mean it needs to be excluded. And I'm so glad to say that it's kind of like gaining, it's gaining force in recognition and stuff like that. In fact, actually, this last year, um, a lot of changes in diagnosis codes and how things are um, built and, and built and stuff like that. And they even changed how things are diagnosed. Um, they've changed the criteria. And it's one of those things like it doesn't really, it doesn't take your, your diagnosis away, which is good. That's what I was afraid of because I was like, you know what? It's the only thing that's made any perfect sense with the POTS, with the migraines, with everything else that I've got going on. Um, and I was afraid that was going to be taken away, but no, it, it actually just extends on it. Um, it gives you some more idea of why and other things to look out for. So that is EDS in a nutshell. Um, Angela asked, you know, are you born with it? Yes, because it's genetic and it's passed on from, from your parents and your family. Um, she also asked, does it manifest when you get older or do you have symptoms as kids? And do EDS patients always have POTS? So first off, let's go with, um, does it manifest when you get older? It actually can manifest at any time. I know several people who have children who have manifested really early with symptoms. And with me, again, I, I didn't really think about it until the dislocations really started happening a lot. Um, and especially after I got my POTS diagnosis. Typically, it sounds like, from what I'm getting from the community, if you're diagnosed with EDS, it's likely to get POTS. Um, normally, EDS becomes before POTS. And with me, it was switched. Um, I got my POTS diagnosis, and then a year and a half later, I had my EDS diagnosis. Um, you can get POTS from anything. You can, um, reaction to vaccinations, re, um, reactions to surgeries. Um, autonomic dysfunction, such as POTS, can come on at, at any time with anything. It can come on from an illness. Um, some people develop it from childbirth, you know, having kids and stuff. So, with me, no, my doctors have pretty much timed it down to, yes, you have you had POTS. I've had symptoms of it for a while, but no doctors ever really took me seriously until I was in ICU. And um, my roommates couldn't get me conscious for more than like 20 seconds at a time because anytime I'd sat up, it would black back out. Um, uh, kids can have symptoms and everything. Symptoms can range from a very, um, just a very minor thing like, ooh, I've got scratch, you know, stretchy skin because um, collagen makes our skin really, really soft and very fragile. Um, to well, it was like me. I'm dislocating major or major joints just trying to get out of bed in the morning. Um, there are people who walk. There's people who do marathons and triathlons and all sorts of stuff with EDS. And then there's people like me who are on a different end of the spectrum and we have to use mobility aids at all times. I use wheelchairs. I have an electric chair and I also have a manual chair for when I'm out and my jazzy can't go with me. Um, 
it was very important for that manual chair to be as light as possible because I'm the one having to push myself. And as I'm pushing myself, my shoulders are clicking in and out. My hands are coming apart. And um, it's, it, it's crazy. But, you know, if the lighter the chair it is, the easier it is for me to maneuver around. So um, I had that. I also have a walker and I have canes. And it kind of depends on how I'm feeling that day of what, what I do. With my pots, um, I pass out quite easily, actually. And that's why I actually do IV therapy for my pots. And um, I know some people with EDS, um, because EDS can affect different organ systems, like your stomach and, and stuff like that. Um, I know I've had some issues in the past where my stomach is, is beginning to be, become paralyzed. Um, some days it doesn't work. Some days I can't swallow. It's like my body gets this far and then it's just like there's no strength for everything to go down. It doesn't work. Um, so, I mean, I do IV therapy. I know some people who do feeding tubes with it. And uh, it, it's pretty much, it's very individual to, to each person. We are not cookie cutter. And my favorite saying is I'm not a Google article. I was in the nursing home the first time. And um, again, being the young, I've been the youngest patient all three times that I've been in a nursing home. So that's kind of awkward, but I'm there for physical therapy. I'm there for intense inpatient physical therapy. And, um, you know, it's great for that. I have to highly recommend it for that. But, um, the first time I was in the nursing home, they, you know, once they knew I was coming, they passed around a Google article about what POTS is. And, you know, keep in mind, I just had two dislocated hips and I wasn't really with the world and I hadn't really been feeling great. And um, I'm dealing with all the pot stuff on top of all of it. And I've had to tell people, you know, if you have questions about my issues, come ask me. I'm not a Google article. Half the stuff that I deal with on a regular basis was not covered in that Google article because it was just a big general, very general, general overview. And it's the same thing with EDS and POTS, both. They're not really rare. I think they're just rarely diagnosed. I think they're, they're commonly diagnosed and misdiagnosed as something else. Um, I know a lot of people who have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And, um, you know, it was actually POTS. You know, not saying you can't have fibro and pot and EDS at the same time. Sorry, that shouldn't have been POTS. That should have been EDS with that last sentence. I'm really, really tired. Um... But, um, you know, it, it's one of those things I really wish it was more taken in, in consideration. So, Kathy also asked um, one more question, and she's like, what is the hardest thing to deal with? With EDS, so much of your body is affected, basically down to everything, because collagen is everywhere. And with the severity of what you've got going on, it depends on what the hardest you know, thing is for each person. It's very individual. Pain and pain management is a huge thing. There's not much of either. Um, well, there's more more of one and not enough of the other. And um, for me, I, I go through a lot of pain. I go through a lot of joint pain because of dislocations and subluxations. Um, it varies day to day depending on what I'm doing. If I go out, like say if I go out to eat, with some friends and I have to be transferred uh, or transported in a say a car. That means I have to get in my wheelchair, I have to pull myself to the door, I have to transfer into a car. When we drive, we have to transfer back out. And um, sometimes my friends are really cool and they'll push me. Normally they ask me if they want, if I want to be pushed. Um, I try to be as independent as possible, but sometimes it don't work. And the action of having to sit up, depending on how my hips are acting, like right now, um, I'm sitting up and my, my legs are killing me. My legs are a big deal because my hips are so fragile. Um, if we go shopping, that's extra energy expended, having to move around the store, um, get there and back. Now, Jazzy is really cool. I love Jazzy because Jazzy's an electric wheelchair, but Jazzy is a tank. Um, she's very heavy. She doesn't come apart. So, um, but I'm really lucky because where I live, I can sit in Jazzy and I have a home health aide and we both will go take a walk. Um, we'll go down to CVS and we'll pick up this or that, or we'll go to Walgreens, pick up this and that. I'm close to the library, so we go down there and pick up books and movies and things like that. Um, I'm really lucky. Some people who have these conditions, um, you know, I, I know it's a big strain on marriages and, and stuff like that, but, 
I guess in my mind, that's when the vow, you know, sickness and health really comes into play. And um, I'm very lucky. Yes, I live, on, I live on my own. I have a cat, and you may have seen her, like, walking around back here. I don't know where she's at right now. Oh, she's, she's sitting in my wheelchair. Um, I'm very lucky that I have home health it coming in. And I'm able to stay in my home. I've been in the nursing home three times because I needed extra help and I didn't have it at the time. Um, I'm glad to say I haven't been in the nursing home in a year. Not to say I probably won't end up going back someday, but I have an aide who comes and helps me shower. Because with my POTS, I have issues, you know, doing that. With my EDS, I have even, even further issues. Having my hands trying to wash my hair or anything like that is just almost impossible. We have ways we figure it out, but I'm glad for the help. Um, but I'd say for me, the hardest thing is the pain. Um, because the pain never goes away, no matter how hard you try. And depending on the weather, it gets worse. So, that's it. I know, like I said earlier, I said I know, I know some people who have feeding tubes because their stomach is paralyzed with it. And I'm lucky I'm not there yet. I guess I use a port because we have to basically trick my body into having enough blood volume to get blood to my brain because without uh leg strength and especially strength in my veins and everything to help push it back up it goes to my feet so when i'm even when i'm sitting up you know i typically try to have my feet underneath me and everything that helps with some of that it helps keep it you know a little bit balanced but going out's kind of hard because of of that you know i'm either hurting or i'm passing out so, but those are our first three questions, and those are really awesome questions. I'm really happy I was able to answer them for you. Um, it, if you have more questions, hey, let me know. Go to The Life of Rebecca on Facebook and, you know, shoot me a message. You don't even have to leave it, you know, where everyone can see it. Shoot me a private message. Um, if you want, go to my personal Facebook. If you're on there, shoot me a message. Any way you want to get a message to me to answer your questions, I am more than willing to do so. Um, and just on a final note, this is something that a lot of people forget. Again, we're not a cookie cutter. Um, this is how I'm choosing, how I choose to deal with my EDS and my, my POTS is very personal to me. And I know some people who have told me before, it's like you gave up. I don't see like I gave up. And I don't feel like I gave in. I do come to a point of understanding, and I think everybody does this with these chronic illnesses, that there comes to a point where you have to be like, okay, I'm done for a moment. And however long that needs to be, it can be. I just want to know how to live with it. You know, how am I supposed to survive every day to day? I have this problem. I, I lose a hip in the evening trying to get out of bed or get in bed. What can I do to make that easier on me? Well get step stools and, and take smaller steps and get into bed instead of jumping into a very tall bed. You know, it's very personal. And um, I've had somebody tell me one time, you're not doing everything you possibly can. Wrong. I am doing everything I possibly can. And honestly, right now I'm happy. Nobody wants to be disabled and nobody wants to hurt all the time. But I feel like for once in a very long time, I'm getting some pretty steady ground and I know what I'm doing. And um, I feel like I'm doing okay. So how I manage my POTS and EDS, um, completely different than my friends in the EDS support groups. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So just a little thing to keep in mind. So on that note, I'm going to close this out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little longer than normal. And um, like I said before, please send me your questions. We have all month to do these videos and get them up. And I'm really, really excited. Again, it's EDS Awareness Month. It is May. October will be Dysautonomia Month, which is what POTS is. So you can expect the same type of you know, regiment going on then. So again, really glad you stayed here. Thank you so much for all your support and love. And um, as I always say at the end, I love you. Stay out of trouble. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.